Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for standing by, and welcome to the Garmin Limited Third Quarter 2020 Earnings Conference Call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. After the speaker presentation, there will be a question and answer session. To ask a question during the session, you will need to press star 1 on your telephone. Please be advised that today's conference is being recorded. If you require any further assistance, please press star 0. I would now like to end the conference here to speak it today. Terry Seck with Investor Relations. Please go ahead, ma'am. Good morning. We would like to welcome you to Garmin Limited's third quarter 2020 earnings call. Please note that the earnings, press release, and related slides are available at Garmin's Investor Relations site on the Internet at www.garmin.com. An archive of the webcast and related transcripts will also be available on our website. This earnings call includes projections and other forward-looking statements regarding Garmin Limited and its business. Any statements regarding our future financial position, revenues, earnings, gross margins, operating margins, future dividends, market shares, product introductions, future demand for our products and plans and objectives are forward-looking statements. The forward-looking events and circumstances discussed in this earnings call may not occur and actual results could differ materially as a result of risk factors affecting Garmin. Information concerning these risk factors is contained in our Form 10-K and third quarter 2020 Form 10-Q filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission. In particular, there is significant uncertainty about the duration and impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. This means that results could change at any time and any statement about the impact of COVID-19 on the company's business results and outlook is the best estimate based on the information available as of today's date. Presenting on behalf of Garmin Limited this morning are Cliff Pimble, President and Chief Executive Officer, and Doug Besson, Chief Financial Officer and Treasurer. At this time, I would like to turn the call over to Cliff Pimble. Thank you, Terry, and good morning, everyone. Earlier today, Garmin reported record third quarter operating results. Consolidated revenue exceeded $1.1 billion as strong demand for active lifestyle products fueled growth of 19% over the prior year. Gross margin was 60.2%. Operating income increased 21% year over year to $317 million and operating margin expanded to 28.6%. This resulted in GAAP EPS of $1.63 and performant EPS of $1.58 for the quarter, up 24% over the prior year. We are pleased with our performance so far in 2020, especially considering the unprecedented challenges caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Trends in the business are stabilizing, which gives us confidence to provide fiscal 2020 guidance, which I will cover shortly. First, I'd like to offer a few remarks on the performance of each of our business segments. Starting with marine revenue increased 54%, as we experience growth in multiple product categories led by strong demand for chart plotters. Growth in operating margins were 61% and 31% respectively, resulting in operating income growth of over 150%. There are two key factors driving these results. First, the market is expanding as new customers embrace boating and fishing. Second, Our strong lineup of products and game-changing technologies are driving market share gains. We continue to be recognized for our innovation and achievements in the marine industry. For the sixth consecutive year, the National Marine Electronics Association named Garmin Manufacturer of the Year, and we received four Product of Excellence awards. We were also recognized as one of the top ten most innovative marine companies by Soundings Trade Only a B2B news and information provider for the recreational boating industry. Looking forward, we anticipate that interest in boating and fishing will remain strong. We plan to capitalize on these trends by offering a compelling lineup of products with innovative features and disruptive technologies. Turning next to the fitness segment, segment, revenue increased 35% driven by strong demand for advanced wearables and cycling products. Growth in operating margins were 54% and 27% respectively, resulting in operating income growth of 75% over the prior year. 
The pandemic continues to highlight the importance of living a healthy life, and our fitness segment benefited from this trend. During the quarter, we launched the new 4Runner 745, expanding the features offered in our mid-tier multi-sport product range. We also launched Clipboard, an app that facilitates team training and performance monitoring using Garmin devices. In the advanced wellness category, we launched the Venue SQ, an entry-level smartwatch that combines daily wear style with industry-leading activity tracking and health monitoring features. Looking forward, we expect a broader trend in fitness and wellness to continue. We plan to leverage our recent acquisition of First Feet to offer products with unique health, wellness, and fitness features. In addition, we intend to capitalize on the indoor cycling opportunity with our tax product line. Turning next to the outdoor segment, revenue increased 30% with strength in all major categories led by strong demand for adventure watches. Gross and operating margins were 67% and 44% respectively, resulting in 40% operating income growth. The segment benefited from increased consumer interest in outdoor activities. InReach is an important technology that provides critical emergency and communication services in places where cell phones simply don't work. We recently added InReach to our popular Montana series, and we announced that InReach has facilitated over 5,000 SOS incidents since its launch in 2011. This is a significant milestone, reflecting the important role InReach technology can play in changing outcomes. Looking forward, we expect the broader trends in outdoor to continue. We plan to leverage this opportunity by offering unique products that maximize the enjoyment of outdoor activity, and adventure. Turning next to the auto segment, revenue decreased 6% as the decline in consumer P&D was partially offset by growth in specialty categories and revenue from new OEM programs. Growth in operating margins were 45% and 3% respectively. The auto segment continues to transform as we launch new specialty products like the Garmin Catalyst an industry-first real-time coaching tool designed to optimize track racing performance. New OEM projects are also making contributions and will further diversify the revenue mix in the segment. During the quarter, we began production shipments of the MGU 2020 computing module, marking the beginning of our relationship with BMW Automobiles as a Tier 1 supplier. In addition, we began shipments of a complete infotainment solution for the Daimler Vito van. Looking forward, we will continue to pursue growth opportunities in specialty product categories. In addition, we will be making major investments to complete OEM projects we have won in recent years, and we will continue to pursue new opportunities as a Tier 1 supplier of innovative electronic solutions for a broad range of vehicles. Looking finally at the aviation segment, revenue decreased 19% due to lower revenue from OEM product categories and the expected decline of the ADSV market. Gross and operating margins were 71% and 19% respectively. While the OEM market has experienced some headwinds, we see positive signs in the smaller aircraft segment, especially in owner-flown aircraft. In addition, when adjusting for the impact of ADSV, we see encouraging signs in the retrofit market as aircraft owners take advantage of the latest cockpit technologies. During the quarter, Autoland achieved FAA certification on the Cirrus Vision Jet, which is the first jet aircraft to incorporate Autoland technology. This latest certification brings the Autoland-equipped aircraft to three models, including the previously certified Piper M600 and the Daher TBM 940. Autoland is receiving notable recognition as an important new safety technology for general aviation. An Aviation Week network recently selected Autoland as the Grand Laureate winner for its achievement in the category of business aviation. Looking forward, we believe that the general aviation market will stabilize as impacts from the pandemic, the associated economic fallout, and the ADSB mandate begin to fade. We will continue to invest in compelling new products and technology 
in anticipation of the next chapter of growth for the general aviation market. In summary, I'm very proud of what Garmin Associates have accomplished so far in 2020 while facing circumstances that no one could have anticipated just one year ago. Considering our growing confidence in business trends, we are issuing full year 2020 guidance. We now project revenue of approximately $4 billion as growth in marine, fitness, and outdoor more than offset the expected declines in aviation and auto. We anticipate gross margin of approximately 59% and operating margin of approximately 24%. Assuming a pro forma effective tax rate of 10%, pro forma earnings per share are expected to be approximately $4.70. Looking at full year 2020 revenue guidance by segment, we expect the marine segment to grow 25%, the fitness segment to grow 20%, and the outdoor segment to grow 15%. We expect the aviation segment to decline 17% and the auto segment to decline 20%. So that concludes my remarks this morning. Next, Doug will discuss additional details on our financial results. Doug? Thanks, Cliff. Good morning, everyone. I begin by reviewing our third quarter financial results through the comments on the balance sheet, cash flow statement, and taxes. We post a record revenue over $1.1 billion for the third quarter, representing 19% growth year-over-year. Coast margin was 60.2%, 50 basis point decrease from the prior year. Operating expense, percentage sales, was 31.6%, 110 basis point decrease from the prior year. Operating income was $317 million, 21% increase year-over-year. Operating margin was 28.6%, 60 basis point increase, in the prior year. Our GAAP EPS was $1.63, our performance EPS was $1.58, a 24% increase from the prior year. Next, we look at our third quarter revenue by segment. We achieved revenue of over $1.1 billion with three of our five segments posting growth of 30% or more, led by the marine segment with a robust revenue growth of 54%. By geography, we achieved 19% growth in Americas, EMEA, and APAC. Looking at our year-to-date revenue for the first three quarters of 2020, our consolidated revenue is up 7% with the prior year, with three or five segments posting double-digit growth, led by the fitness segment with 25% growth, followed closely by the marine segment with 24% growth. Looking next, operating expenses. Our third quarter operating expenses increased by $45 million, or 15%. Research and development increased $26 million year-over-year, year, primarily due to investments and engineering resources. Our advertising expense increased by approximately $1 million due to higher spend in our outdoor segment. SGNA increased $17 million compared to the prior year quarter, primarily due to increases in information technology costs, personnel-related expenses. The highlights on the balance sheet, cash flow statement, and taxes. We ended the quarter with cash and marketable securities for approximately $2.7 billion and no debt. Accounts receivable increased sequentially to $658 million and increased year-over-year in line with third-quarter sales. Inventory balance increased on both a sequential year-over-year basis paired for the seasonally strong fourth quarter supported by increasingly diversified product lines. During the third quarter of 2020, we generated free cash flow $236 million, $78 million increase for the prior quarter. For full year 2020, expect free cash flow to be approximately $750 million, approximately $175 million capital expenditures. Also during the quarter, we paid dividends of $117 million. During the third quarter of 2020, we reported an effective tax rate of 6.9% compared to the effective tax rate of 11.6% in the prior quarter. The decrease is primarily due to the intellectual property migration transaction. We expect our full year 2020 performance effective tax rate to be approximately 10%. This concludes our formal remarks. Joelle, could you please open the line for Q&A? Thank you. As a reminder, to ask a question, you will need to press star 1 on your telephone. To withdraw your question, press the pound key. If you stand by, we'll be compiled to Q&A roster. Our first question comes from Paul Chung with J.P. Morgan. You know, and it's our welcome. 
Hi, guys. Uh, thanks for taking my questions, and congrats on the quarter. Um, so, so just on fitness on tax, um, you've had this asset for, you know, more than a year now. Can you give us a sense of how much, you know, incremental growth you have driven, you know, by kind of leveraging your distribution network and then assume the pandemic has accelerated sales in that business? If you could confirm any sense for the outperformance there and then I have a follow up. Yeah, Paul, I, I think tax has been a wonderful acquisition for us. Um, definitely. Um, leveraging the Garmin network is helping us. Tax did not have a strong presence in the North American market, so we're, a, we're able to expand that now. And, of course, Asia is another opportunity. They were mostly um, strong in, in Europe before we bought them. Okay, thanks for that. And then on first beat, um, you know, how do we size up this business um, you know, assume the margins are quite high given the license model. Is it is it a meaningful contributor, or is it kind of more of an added feature you, you'll roll across more of your smartwatches? Well, it's a contributor, and, and as you say, it's it's uh, high margins because it's licensing business. But uh, for us, we look at, at it as a an important um, uh, technology provider for our products and uh, being able to, to uh, support the existing wellness and fitness features as well as developing new advanced metrics that we can have in our uh, smartwatch and cycling products. Okay, and then, and then lastly, it's not very common for you to have, you know, kind of uniform year-on-year -year growth across all the regions, but, um, you know, any trends across the regions that stand out during the quarter or what you're seeing early in Q4? Thank you. Yeah, I would, I would make a couple of notes there. I, I think that uh, um, it is kind of uh, interesting to see 19% across the board. In the Americas, um, that growth would have been even stronger if you adjust for the impact of, of the ADSB surge last year. So so Americas is even stronger than what we're, we're showing there in terms of the other consumer products. And in Asia, I would say that um, they have been slower to come back from the COVID-19 impact, but we do see signs of stabilization, and each country is different, but uh, we do see positive signs in some of the major countries as they emerge out of out of crisis mode. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from Charlie Anderson with Collier Securities. Your line is now open. Yeah, thanks for taking my questions, and congrats on a really strong quarter. It was uh, great to hear, Cliff, that there's some stabilizing trends in aviation. So I wonder if you could maybe expand on that a little bit. I know you serve many portions of that market, um, you know, in terms of size and, and platforms. I'm also sort of curious, looking within the, you know, the various categories in aviation, where do you see stabilization versus what's still, um, you know, impacted uh, in, a, in a large way by the pandemic? And then I've got to follow up. Well, as I mentioned in the remarks, the, the OEM categories uh, reflecting owner-flown aircraft are are doing uh, reasonably well in this environment, and, and uh, we've seen encouraging signs um, there. On the retrofit side of things, as, as I mentioned, if we um, eliminate the impact from ADSB, we see positive signs in retrofit, particularly driven around new display systems and autopilot systems for uh, existing aircraft on the market. So. I think the technologies are, are super. The, the safety technologies that come in the retrofit market with our autopilot system and our display systems is something that people recognize as great value, and uh, we see a lot of strength there. Okay, great. And then for my follow-up, I'm, I'm curious on automotive. We're going to now go through this transition where OEM essentially becomes a larger portion of the revenue now that BMW has begun. I wonder if you could speak to the margin profile of that segment from a go-forward basis looks like, um, you know, we're not going to make much money in that segment this year, but I'm sort of curious as that um, uh, layers in, how that impacts margins going forward. Thanks. Yeah, definitely the margin on the OEM categories is um, lower than the, than the trends on the consumer spot side, especially as we uh, see the consumer side transition to more specialty products, which are um, also higher uh, margins. So we'll see that that mix of, uh, of revenues impact the OEM segment. And as I mentioned in my remarks, we're still investing heavily to bring these programs to market. Uh, we've, we've brought the BMW, the first BMW program uh, to fruition, uh, which we're a build-to-print supplier 
uh, second source basically for, for that uh, module which is designed by another party. On the other program that we've won, we, we're the lead design uh, partner with BMW on that and others are built to print for us. And so consequently, we're investing heavily in bringing that uh, technology to market. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thanks, Charlie. Thank you. And our next question comes from Will Power with Beard. Your line is now open. Oh, great, thanks. Yeah, I guess a couple of questions. Maybe just to kind of follow up on the, the previous auto question. Just trying to, I guess, wondering if you could help us uh, think about, you know, the cadence of additional OEM, you know, projects behind BMW and, and what that can mean in terms of, you know, turning the quarter on, uh, you know, getting that to, you know, break even and maybe, you know, positive growth. And what's kind of the outlook or timing of, uh, you know, that transition and improving the growth outlook there? We do have additional um, projects that are underway, um, which which we can't really talk about the specifics. The one that's uh, the major one, of course, is is the uh, BMW uh, project that we announced about a year ago. In terms of uh, revenue uh, performance in, in this environment as we bring new projects online, definitely we've said before that, that 2020 and into 2021 is going to be an inflection point for revenue growth as these new programs uh, start to contribute. Okay, um, maybe just to, uh, to switch gears to outdoors continues to be, you know, strong performance. Any further color there as to the key drivers? I, I suspect, you know, the Phoenix line continues to be, you know, probably the, the lead uh, driver there. But uh, any color on other, you know, key contributors there in the quarter? Yeah, I would say that uh, Phoenix and Instinct are both very strong product lines for us. We launched new versions of those products with solar charging technology, which is a unique differentiator for Garmin. And uh, those products um, uh, were uh, were very popular in the quarter as we sold into the channel, and they're starting to sell through now. But we do see strength across other categories, basically everything that involves adventure and uh, outdoor activity, especially golf. Golf is very strong as well. Um, and uh, we felt very good about the performance of our categories in the quarter. Okay. Yeah, actually, maybe if I could sneak in one for Doug, just on thinking about taxes and the potential change in administrations, uh, you know, next week. Any early thoughts as to how, you know, a potential change can impact, you know, tax strategy and, you know, how you look at um, you know, your plans on that front? Yeah. You know, uh, we do not uh, provide any um, – extra or any additional guidance besides the current year for any effective tax rates. You know, there's a lot of uh, moving parts that go into that uh, tax rate, you know, obviously the statutory rates, uh, the income by jurisdiction, deductions, that's so we'll kind of wait to see how it all uh, plays out. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Will. <clears throat> Thank you. Our next question comes from Ben Bolin with Cleveland Research. Your line is now open. Good morning, Cliff, Doug, Terry. Uh, thanks for taking the question. Um, Cliff, could you talk a little bit about what you're seeing from a product availability perspective across categories? seems like some may have been short in the quarter. Uh, could you talk to maybe fitness or marine or outdoor if you're seeing any tightness in delivering product, and then if you're seeing any raw material shortages associated with those builds? And then I have a, a follow-up. Yeah, so um, product availability has been fairly tight. The demand has been strong, and, and we did make adjustments coming out of uh, the significant drop in activity associated with um, Q2 when all of the lockdown, lockdowns took place. And since that time, we've been working hard to ramp back up to the levels needed to fill demand. Uh, I think we're doing okay, but, but the, uh, the backlogs are very strong for us right now, um, so we're working hard uh, to fill those. In terms of raw materials, uh, we've, we've mostly been okay. Um, I would say there's a few um, shortages here and there, and especially as our forecasts uh, change to the upside, um, we have to deal with with uh, that situation within lead times from our suppliers, but we've had very good cooperation. We've been able to mostly get um, everything that we need. We rely on our safety stock, of course, uh, in our business, so, so we do have inventories of things that we can continue to build uh, products. 
and our vertical integration uh, model is something that allows us to be flexible in what we build and when. Okay. Um, and then the other question is, as it relates to your partners, it seemed like early on with COVID, a lot of the retailers did the same thing. They drew down working capital and inventory, uh, and now they're trying to replenish going into the holidays. Um, do you have any thoughts on where finished goods inventory is with partners and you know, how you think that could be playing into your overall visibility as you look forward? Thanks. Many partners are experiencing um, the same uh, things that we are, so the increased demand, and even though they're they're uh, taking more products, they also are selling out uh, very quickly as well. So we believe that the channel inventory on uh, most of the consumer categories is is uh, um, uh, not not high. In fact, it's very lean, and in uh, a lot of cases, we we find customers looking for our products. So. Again, we're working hard with our partners to fill the demand and, and to um, to help customers find what they want. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from Nick Todorov with Longbow Research. Our line is now open. Thanks. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I, I just wanted to, to look at the, the implied four quarter guidance. Um, I, I think the, the implications for sales is to be up sequentially, but I think if you look at the implied EPS for the fourth quarter, that's down more than 15% quarter over quarter. Um, I know typically you have a sequential decline in, in fitness margins in the fourth quarter due to promotions, which is uh, okay, but I guess that the, the sequential decline, uh, it seems a little bit on the EPS side, it's a little bit more uh, than usual. I guess, can you talk about uh, any additional puts and takes? I think Q4 um, is different uh, than Q3. Um, as we look at the promotions that are going to go on over the holiday season, um, as as well as the product mix and the segment mix, so so there's a lot of different factors that go into play there. We'll also be doing um, more advertising uh, sequentially, so um, these are all factors that come into play there um, with our guide. Okay, so let's and then. On the aviation segment, I think you spoke about signs of stabilization, um, which is encouraging. At the same time, I think if I look at the the, the guidance for 17% decline for the year, I think that implies an acceleration in year-over-year declines, where the, the comp on the, from an year-over-year perspective was is, is easier um, from last year. I just wonder if there is anything particular that affects that the December quarter. Yeah, that has a very simple explanation. Q4 of 2019 was a huge quarter with ADSB um, and the surge in equipage that was going on, and so that's a, a, a headwind that will quickly fade as we move past Q4. Okay, and last question for me. Um, I just want to make sure the major investments that you talked about in OEM, there, there's nothing new incremental there. It's just that you guys are, are keep, keep, have to keep up with the ramp up. Um, I don't know. Have, is there any way you can size up the, the how much of the net investments you guys are putting into those programs? Yeah. So yeah, basically, um, as Cliff mentioned, we are continuing to invest. You know, in our OEM business is primarily um, the R and D investments. You know, as we get closer to production. Uh, also, in the capex, uh, we did have increased year-over-year -year capex uh, relating to manufacturing facility we have in uh, Europe there. Okay, just a quick follow-up uh, on, on tax. I think you, I believe you guys were expecting new capacity to come online here in the second half of this year. I just wonder if you can give us an update on that, if it's ready to go, and you, you guys are going to be able to supply product into the December quarter. Yeah, the new tax facility is operating. We're starting to do some uh, production functions there, as well as distribution of the products out of that facility. And now in Q4, um, we should be ramping up uh, physical production lines on the various products to be able to manufacture them in the new facility. So we're very pleased with that, and we believe that's going to be a big incremental adder to filling the tax backlog that we have. Got it. Thanks. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from Ivan Feinseth with Tigris Financial Partners. Your line is now open. Thank you. Thanks for taking my question, and congratulations on another great quarter. And congratulations on this cadence of new products. 
that you've been able to continue during this difficult time. So now, on in April, on your Q1 call, you had said that um, you were seeing strong demand for marine, and you know, no better way to social distance than be in the middle of a lake on a boat. And it seems you have brought out a lot of new products that you know provide ancillary, you know participation in the marine, including um, fishing and diving. Did you have these products like already in the pipeline, or were you able to kind of pivot toward meeting that demand? And that ability to do that has, you know, driven your great success. So your adaptability, did you have these new products planned, or did you kind of develop them as you saw this need growing earlier this year? Yeah, I think really we focus on long-term roadmaps and the products that we introduced yesterday, for instance, in the marine market were products that we've been planning, um, you know, throughout the uh, uh, COVID cycle uh, since before it was uh, a known thing. Um, we didn't waver from the investment we were making in our product roadmaps. I think that's the key thing, and we were able to maintain our product release schedules um, even in the face of significant challenges that we've had like every company with uh, working from home and and uh, distancing in the workplace. So I'm super proud of what our team has accomplished. I'm actually amazed sometimes at what they've been able to do. And uh, I think our products are a testament to their determination to be successful uh, in the face of this pandemic. Absolutely. And then the pandemic, you know, this whole stay at home, at home, play at home, and, you know, gaming has been a huge um things since the pandemic, and then you brilliantly come out with an eSports watch. So I like the way that you are taking advantage of or adapting to the environment. Um, the, you mentioned the indoor cycling. What is your plan there to uh, expand your presence in the super hot indoor cycling and indoor fitness market? Well, our, our um, uh, response from the customers on, on tax has been very strong. Um, we have a lot of backlog for those products, and, and we're working hard to fill those, especially as we look towards the winter season as people are going uh, to be in more. So the tax facility, the new production facility, is a big part of our plan uh, to take advantage of that and expanding our distribution, especially in the Americas and Asia, for those products. Then what other areas, you say, um, more specialty auto products like the Catalyst, what, what other types of products you have kind of envision coming out? Well, we have other categories in the works. I can't share details on those, but we have a creative team uh, that are active participants in, in lifestyles, and so I anticipate we're going to see more new categories in the future in auto uh, targeting the specialty categories. All right. Thank you very much, and congratulations again. Thanks, Ivan. Thank you. Our next question comes from Eric Woodring with Morgan Stanley. Your line is now open. Hey, good morning, guys. Congrats on the uh, fantastic results. Um, I just wanted to get your kind of high-level thoughts here on just how, how do you think about your end markets now from the perspective of are we seeing TAM expansion? Are we seeing a pull forward of demand, you know, from potentially 2021 into, you know, the, the summer months? Um, and, and just based on your answer there, kind of what gives you the confidence in your answer? Well, I think each market probably has a, a different story. Uh, as we mentioned in Marine, we're, we're seeing what you would probably call TAM expansion as new customers come into the market. Uh, in, in fitness and outdoor, it's, it's a uh, strong demand for people that want to be healthier and, and to engage in fitness and outdoor activities. So, um, again, those, those could uh, possibly be described as TAM expansion. Uh, there's also market share gains uh, that are factors in those things as well. We don't see anything that's happening right now as pull forward into 2021. The demand um, is strong um, throughout the back end of this year, and we anticipate through the discussions with our partners that 2021 uh, will also have similar trends based on uh, the behavior of people during the pandemic. Awesome. Thank you for that color. And then um, I, I guess how can I or how should we think about the strength in the consumer, the, the fitness and outdoor segment um, in terms of, you know, ASP versus unit driven or, or, or maybe asked a different way? You know, did, did you maybe can you comment on the mix shift that you're seeing either to, um, you know, 
higher priced uh, devices versus lower priced devices? Yeah, I think that there's a combination of things going on there. There's there's definitely um, ASC increases as we launch new products like uh, the Phoenix Solar Line and the Instinct Solar Line. But there's also unit growth as well uh, as we look at our advanced wellness products in, in fitness, for example. So it's a combination of things, and uh, the, the customer base that we're targeting, I think, are, are those that appreciate uh, the value and the capability of the products that we offer. Okay, that's super helpful. And then just one, if I could just squeeze it in here. Um, I, I realize your marine business has been remarkably steady um, basically throughout all four seasons. Um, I looked, I, I count one down quarter in the last 30 quarters. Um, but can you just help us kind of understand from a high level, how do the drivers of the, the marine business change during, for example, the winter months versus the summer months, if at all? Yeah, marine is just uh, historically very seasonal. So um, in uh, normal times, we would expect that the market would slow down in, in uh, Q3, late Q3 especially, and into Q4, and then ramp up again uh, when the new year arrives. This is anything but an ordinary year, and so uh, we saw voting activity continuing to take place throughout Q3, and demand for our products was very strong, not just um, in the sell-in sense, but also in the sell-through sense at our uh, retailers. So, so it's an extraordinary year as people take advantage of time on the water. And as we look at Q4, the, um, the retailer enthusiasm around marine products and the, the plans that they have for promotions are very strong, and so we should also see um, a very strong Q4 for marine, unlike we've seen um, in past years as well. That's great. Thanks for the color. Congrats again, guys. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not showing any further questions at this time. I would now like to turn the call back over to Terry Seck for closing remarks. Thank you all for joining us today. Doug and I are available for callbacks. Have a wonderful day. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's conference call. Thank you for participating. You may now disconnect.